Hey, what's up, what's up? It's your girl, Neek, and you're tuned in to Neek at Night for more Nature Boy coverage. Now, as we approach into day four of his coverage, where his defense is supposed to put on his case, his counsel decided to come forward and give a motion before the court to dismiss the case because he he feels as though they have not met their burden of proof. Now, in addition to his attorney filing for his motion to dismiss, after the judge kind of starts talking and everything like that, Mr. Nature Boy decides he wants to fire his counsel and try to delay so that he can hire somebody else. The judge tells him basically either you go along with him, which I suggest, or you're going to be representing yourself. Either way, the show is going to go on. So he conceded to what the judge was saying, and he decided to keep his attorney and continue on. Now, in a separate video, I showed the whole back and forth between him and the judge and him trying to fire his attorney and all of those things. You can catch that on another video. Now, this video, I'm going to focus on their case in chief for the defense. Now, after the whole fiasco of him trying to fire his attorney, the show had to go on and they had to get to calling witnesses. They called the victim of this case as their first witness and they wanted to go over some of her inconsistent statements. Now, while he was basically questioning the witness and going over the things that were conflicting and they were deciding on what questions she could be asked and what questions she can't, COVID results came in that delayed the process until Thursday. But before they delayed the process, there was quite a bit of testimony with the witness alleged victim of the case and some of the things that they are bringing up. So let's roll that testimony, and I want to say thank you for everybody who's continuing on with coverage with me. I have previously testified in this case, correct? Yes. Okay, and I'm recalling you as a witness in the defense case in chief. Um, and I wanted to go back and review some of the statements that you made uh, to law enforcement. Okay. Now, the very first time after March 24th, 2022, that you reported um, the revenge. Did you go down and do a warrant application at the DeKalb County Magistrate Court? Yeah, I went to the, the police department mm -hmm. and I stayed in front of them, uh, in front of them, mm -hmm. and I did a police report with a cop. Okay, all right, so you didn't go to the Magistrate Court, you went and spoke to this invest to Officer Hugh? Yes. Okay, and so you told him uh, that revenge had been posted online. Yes. And you made a report with him. Yes. Okay. And that was on March the 30th of 2022. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, at that time, you didn't say anything about uh, a sexual assault or anything about rape. Is that that's correct? That's correct. Okay. And your interview or your meeting with that officer was a recorded uh, meeting, correct? Yes, it was. Okay. And that was within five days of the time uh, that you had left the house, correct? Um, more or less, more, okay. actually more, I okay. believe, yes. So, March 25th is when you left the house, the morning of March 25th? Yeah, yes. Okay, all right. Um, now, while I'm on that, you uh, had text messages that were in your phone that were sent from your phone uh, to Kelly Johnson, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and were the messages provided to law enforcement from you? Uh, did they get them from your phone? Um, I believe I asked Kelly for the screenshots, and I believe I sent them to someone. I'm not sure who. Okay. Um, I I believe I sent them to someone. I, I can't remember. I apologize. Okay. All right. So after you uh, were um, questioned and reported to the officer on March the 30th, mm -hmm. after that, the next time that you made a statement, uh, about this case was an interview that you did online with uh, a YouTube YouTuber called The T, correct? Yes. Okay. And do you recall your interview with The T? Yes, I do. Okay. Were you truthful in your interview with The T? Um, I would say I was truthful to my best abilities. Okay. I just came from out the cult, okay. so I still had an influence on okay. me. Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, so when you were interviewed by The T, 
Uh, did you do you recall discussing with the T why you had left uh, carbonation? Um, I don't recall what I said, but I do know why I left. Okay. All right. Um, if I asked you, read you a statement that you made from your interview with the T, uh, would you tell me if you disagree or agree with that statement? Yes, to my best abilities. Okay. Um, in your interview with the T, uh, do you remember what date you did that interview? No. Okay. Now, um, are you aware that the T is the same group of people that sent those text messages to um, the detective in this case? Um, sure. All right. All right. Did you provide a text message to the T? Did I, excuse me? Did you provide text messages to the T? Me and her text all the time, yes. Okay, but did you provide the text messages with you and Kelly Johnson to the T? I may have. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm going to read you, uh, this is a transcript of your statements from YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I left carbonation because basically he didn't hit me, but I was hit by Zoku, Eferu, and Shiva did push me and nudge me and was getting up in my face as well as the reason why this happened. It's because they feel as if I was being disrespectful to him by giving him a face. Does that sound like something that you said? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Now, in your interview, further, um, you talk more about, you know, what you said that happens, uh, and, and did you call Mr. Bishop something along the lines of Babaji? I'm not exactly sure how to spell that, but do you know how to spell that? How do you spell that? B-A-B-A-J-I. B-A-B-A-J-I. Okay. Um, and so, did you have, was there a girl in the group named um, Malia? Yes. Was Malia considered to be the queen? Yes. Were you frustrated by Malia being the queen? No. Okay. I'm going to read you, uh, again, you tell me if you disagree with this okay. taken from your interview. Um, can I explain my answer? Yeah, once I, if I can read it first and you tell me. Yeah, it's, let him read the question, then you answer the question, and then you can explain your answer. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, All right, use as a servant and con and come tomorrow, she's gonna be the servant and this and that. And I'm just like, wow, like really? And one of the reasons why I left is because y'all don't know when he was trying to do the queen thing, there wasn't gonna be a new queen. It was all an act. At first it wasn't, I'm thinking that I'm actually have a shot, a chance to like prove that, okay, well, I can, I can definitely, you know, take the queen uh, to the queen thing and really do something positive with the cup, but nah, he was like, it was never gonna be that way. He said that it's gonna be criminally a queen, queen, she's gonna be, she's gonna remain the queen. And so, do, and I'm gonna skip forward, I'm gonna be her servant, I'm gonna be her servant, I'm gonna kiss her feet in front of the whole world. <coughs> Did you have an issue with her being the queen and you not being the queen? I had an issue with the dynamic and the triangulation. Um, excuse me if I'm not saying that right, but triangulation that Elihio Bishop was doing with the women in the cult. Okay. Um, I decided that after he himself, Elihio Bishop, was telling me behind closed doors that I might be the queen, are you really the queen of combination, Terry? Can you do this job? Are you meant for this job? And he's had countless encounters in front of everyone saying that I was qualified and I was more of a um, goddess than the other women. I thought I could take the queen role and do something positive with our culture that we was creating in the group. Um, I didn't like I didn't like how he put the women against each other and made them jealous of me because um, he would always tell the women that he liked to be better than the other ones. I thought I could change the dynamic of the queen, because he, like I said, he never hit me. But I thought I could change it. It was a lot of abuse, yes, mental and, you know, emotional abuse. But, but, I he, thought, but he never hit you, though. 
No, and I thought that I can change that dynamic. So I wanted to become the queen so I can make a change like I was naturally doing in the cult. Okay. So being that he, he never hit you, you, how long were you in the group? Uh, I was on and off in the group for three years. Okay. And um, when it came down to uh, Eligio Bishop, though he's never hit me physically, uh, the mental and emotional abuse and a phys the uh, spiritual abuse was always present. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm going to skip through this section, but essentially you talk about the girls and you are having a dispute. So do you agree that night that the girls and you, that they, the girls were basically being physical with you? Yes, they were physical on Alihio Bishop's orders. Okay. And well, I'm going to get to that, but go ahead, you finish your answer. Yes, also I wanted to tell you before when you said, um, I'm going to kiss her feet, mm -hmm. he told the world that, or he told the cult that I was going to kiss her feet. I never said to my mouth that I wanted to kiss her feet. He okay. was going to, he was ordering me to kiss her feet the next day. He said that I was going to kiss her feet in front of the whole world and become a slave to carbonation. Okay, and you, you wanted to be the queen, you didn't want to be in that position. She didn't want to be I no slave. I was just trying to take the role so I can become something positive in the group. My queen, the queen position was something used for power and control when it comes down to the women and to make them jealous of each other and compete against one another. Um, I just wanted to take the role because I wanted to make a change within my culture. Okay. All right. Do you disagree with the following statement that you made? Baba G, that's Elijah, who comes in, and he's like, are you okay? And I told him no. And he was like, you know what? You can just go pack your stuff because uh, you can just make it clean and simple. Make it just, just make it, you know, basically he's saying that don't make a fuss about it. Just pack it and just get out. And so you at that point when he got your suitcases and you were about to leave, right? No, I didn't go get my suitcases. Uh, one of the men fetched my suitcases. <laughs> Okay, and then the next thing that you, you said, I would, I would have to object at this point. These are not statements, they're prior statements, and they are not statements in contradiction to what she testified to the first time. If they were, then it would be proper under Rule 413, but instead, we're just rehashing an out of court statement. Mm -hmm. You're saying. Okay. 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 agree, Mr. Booker. Okay. All right, sustain the objection. Let's move on. Okay. Um, do you recall that during the interview, that you indicated that you went upstairs and that you were just crying in his arms. Yes. Okay. Again, same objection. That was well, testified to on direct. I can just play the interview into the record then, Judge. I mean, that's what the state wants. The interview is not admissible. No, we can't. Um, I sustain the objection. Move forward. Well, she hasn't been asked the question. This is not questions that she's been asked before. So it wouldn't be something that would be a prior consistent or inconsistent statement. She's not been asked these particular questions before regarding the specifics of what happened when she was there. Response? Unfortunately, I think this is another matter we have to talk okay. about. So All right. right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, the back. <laughs> Them being sent back and hearing that, like, they're trying to fight to keep out what she said before, I mean, I think that's going to obviously spark curiosity with the jury as to what, what exactly she said that was a huge contrast from what she's saying now and why is it being withheld? Um, I guess it's all I, it's, yeah, it, it's, um, I think it's okay. Um, all right. The state's position is that unless it is a, so in the prior interview, if she said something that was contradicted in court, then it is a prior statement that could come in under 413 is a prior inconsistent statement. The subsection that deals with prior consistent statements would not apply to any of this because Mr. Booker is not attempting to restore the witness's credibility. So prior consistent statements are inapplicable. Prior inconsistent statements are only applicable in as much as they are actually inconsistent with what the witness has testified to, in which case the statement is not, do you, the question is not, do you agree with this statement that you made? It's, do you remember making the statement? And at that point, she can either say yes, no, or explain the statement. 
Here's the, the rule. Yeah, I'll rephrase it based on that. Okay. I mean, the rule is. Um, An out of court statement should not be hearsay if the declarant testifies that the trial or hearing is subject to cross concerning the statement and the statement is admissible as a prior inconsistent statement or a prior consistent statement. It has to be one or the other. Do you agree with that? Yes, and then prior inconsistent statement and prior consistent statement are defined further Correct. in Rule 413. Correct. Because we, not, right. So not every statement that is consistent with a witness's testimony is admissible. It's only admissible under certain circumstances. So I'll ask her if she recalls- Use your mic for me, please. I'm sorry. I'll ask her if she recalls making the statement, uh, and then we can give her an opportunity to, I, the questions that I'm asking her were not questions. I never asked her about the interview. It, it was not anything that was asked on the, when during her examination. So this is all brand new questions. <clears throat> so what are, you, what are you trying to get at? I'm thinking that she did a team interview that was different than the okay. statement that she made it important to be a consistent statement. I would just ask that we address these specific questions based on how this has gone yeah. previously where it, we have not been on the same page at all about what constitutes a prior okay. inconsistent statement. All right, let's go ahead and ask the questions now, Mr. Booker, and get the witnesses to answer and any objection so we don't have to keep sending the jurors in at all. It would be my purpose as if we don't could we do it without asking without the juror being present because I mean what's the point of asking Well then you can ask it again when the jury comes in if it's not objectionable. But the problem is there's an objection the witness. Yeah. Yeah. That's you want to okay. So I, I can proffer the questions that I would intend to ask the court. Is that acceptable? Yes. All right. Go ahead. Um, she states in the interview, Judge, that she doesn't know what happened in that moment. She was really vulnerable. Um, that she that we did make love in that moment. Um, I didn't want to resist him. I didn't want to, like, you know, because any of that, because it was just like, I was gonna resist him. Uh, the Uber's already left, but I just felt stupid and I decided to make love to him. And that wasn't what she ultimately said, Judge. I think that's a very point, big point in this case is whether or not she decided to make love to him or not. Wouldn't that be a prior inconsistent statement, Ms. Kennedy? Most of that, yes. But that was not what we were, right. we were dancing all around that. Like, okay. Yes, that specific. So I will jump right to the point instead of going. Cameraman, to you got one there job. Are there any others, or is that essentially what you're trying to do? Uh, just there's. I'm sorry, sorry, I'm not okay. Uh, there is a bit more to it. Um, additionally, she indicates in the interview uh, that she felt stupid afterwards. Uh, that she had given in. That I'm going to use a word that would be offensive to most people, but I'm going to say it. That she was about having dick rather than love. Uh, I think that that's a valid question that the jury gets to determine. Uh, it, she doesn't mention anything about being forced. So instead of me going through reading the transcript uh, verbatim, piece by piece, what I can do is just question her out of it um, and ask if she recalls making that statement or not. And if she disagrees, then I will read it into the record. And if she agrees, uh, you move she on. Agrees, I'll move on. With, with those two with those questions, questions I, think, uh, I, I do believe those constitute prior inconsistent statements. So I think those are fine. Um, uh, your client is trying to get your attention, Mr. Booker. Hold on, Mr. Bishop. <laughs> Uh, additionally, Judge, she indicated that she felt the love making was fake, uh, but it and it made her feel sad as a result of that. Um, I think that would be a question that I could be able to answer as well because again, she addresses love making. Mr. Kennedy, well, the fact that she had the camera to be on him at all times. She had direct of her first testimony, the fact that she has used the phrase love making. <laughs> That was addressed already. Put it so back on Nature Boy. Not an inconsistent statement with her trial testimony. In fact, it would be 
Yeah, but she the fact that she felt he was faking it during the lovemaking, she never mentioned that. that yes. I don't I recall that being asked by counsel on cross the first time. Around. It wasn't. Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah. All right. I, if you want to ask those three, what, three questions, mm -hmm. yes, that's sir. fine. I think that's fine. Okay. And then can we move on from there? Or are there uh, more? There's, there's an additional question I would ask. All right. Let's that, that's, do it not, again. that's not from the T interview. Okay. This would is you? address a prior statement made by the witness. No, it's, it was a subsequent statement she made that the court, that the DA's office interviewed her, uh, and she indicated that they could have sex just one last time, and she said okay to that. That's exactly what she testified to on direct. Well, I, I think we disagree. That's that's your opinion of what she testified to on direct. I think I have an opportunity because I'm, I have a legal obligation to represent this defendant to ask her to be clear in front of the jury. That, that's their opinion. That's exactly what she said on direct. I don't agree with that. I, I remember her saying she can, she was convinced, I think, to do it. Um, well, I, I guess if the state wants to go that route, then maybe they should, in their closing argument, they should argue that she said it was okay to have sex uh, together. That's the contention. I don't think that's what they're going to argue in closing arguments. Uh, so I, if I'm going to be, I, I think I would be able to ask that question, Judge. They provided this. She told the DA's office. In an interview with them, prepare for trial. I mean, look, it's no secret that she didn't report it right away and she's given conflicting statements, right? So, yes, if I may, that, okay. just one thing. You talk about, well, in my opening statement where I laid out what I expected the evidence to show, he asked one last time and finally, after countless times of saying no, realizing she wasn't leaving that room unless she gave in, she said okay. So I've, I've addressed it in opening. It's what she testified to. I'm not saying it's the most prejudicial thing in the world. I'm saying it's inadmissible because it's not inconsistent with what. It, that's your opening statement. We're dealing. Okay. The jury doesn't get to consider your opening statement. They get to consider that sure. testimony of this right. witness. Well, sure. Correct. Um, all right. So we have this statement to the DA's office, and those other three questions that you want to ask. Yes, sir. And that's it. Yes, sir. And I'm 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 going to define my question in advance now, so that way when I ask it, so number one. Um, that she felt like she was um, vulnerable at that time, and so therefore uh, they had sex and she didn't resist. Is that a fair question? The state's okay with that? And this is what she told T? This is what she told the T. If it's, I think that's appropriate. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Additionally, that she felt that the defendant uh, was faking it during uh, the love making and she felt um, that it, he wasn't being genuine and true as a result. As long as these are captured, do you recall making this statement, not do you believe this statement, but do you yeah. All right, and then <laughs> what she really needed at that time was dick, um, but what she really wanted was real true love. I think that's been addressed one way or the other. So. Is it for the court? Okay. I think it's been addressed, or you do not think it's been addressed? It has not. I don't, I don't remember her saying that. Yeah. No, we would remember her saying that. I, yeah, I <laughs> don't remember her. She did not say that. So, um, that's, I, so I would say no to that question, because that's not a prior inconsistent statement. It would be a prior inconsistent judgment. How is it inconsistent? What is it inconsistent with? The rape? Yes, it's inconsistent with the rape, that she needed to have sex with him rather than not. I think it's relevant. Mr. Kennedy, what was your response to that? I think he said he was okay with it, but maybe I'm wrong. I just, I don't see how it can be inconsistent based on like the absence of testimony. I mean, it's, it's not consistent or inconsistent. It's just not something that came up in her testimony. But it's a statement that she made. Could she be asked if she recalls that statement? If she doesn't recall it, then we'll leave the paper. Just defer to the court on that. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I'll allow it. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Uh, yeah, it um, sounds relevant. All right, what else? 
the Brady, the Brady statement, Judge, which I think the state is agreeable to, and that would be the four questions I would have about that. So I wouldn't ask any more questions about that particular issue. Brady's statement is the one statement that we are objecting to because we believe that it has already been testified to, but I think the court already resolved that defense is fair. That would be the four questions that are in the last. I'm sorry, with the Brady statement? The Brady statement, which the state provided, was that Mr. Bishop indicated to her just one last time, and his response was, okay. That is the linchpin of our entire case, Judge, is whether a rape happened or not. And that statement, the state says, well, I believe she did say that. My position is I don't think she said it clearly. I think I have the right to question her on it. I won't ask her anything else beyond that. All right. Mr. Kennedy? I get to cross on the entire event again. Yep. Yep, you sure do. Okay. All right. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we need to get that in. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I did that the trial needs to recess until Thursday morning because of the COVID positive, despite counsel and jurors, everybody, be wanting to go forward. So I will respect the process, and we are going to, in a non-mist trial, we are going to recess until Thursday morning at 9 o'clock, which will be consistent with the CDC guidelines that are still in place regarding isolation. So that's where we are, and I'm going to bring the jurors out and excuse them until Thursday. All right, and that's what happened. Court will resume on Thursday. There is no more testimony or arguments for today. They're going forward with the victim of the case as their first witness in their case in chief, and you already see the line of questioning. He's trying to get on the record as far as what she said to the T in their interview versus what she's saying now in court. Y'all let me know what y'all think about him trying to fire his attorney, then really like realizing that the woman in that courtroom is God, okay, and she holds the power to his options, and he either had option A or option B. It's either Booker or you. Which one we going with? Okay? All right, come on. Let's go. So we'll see what Booker does with the witnesses on the defense side. That's um what we have for today. I'll see you guys on the next video, okay, while I sit in style with this bucket hat that be bothering the folks. It be bothering the girls, okay? Eh. <laughs> Bye.